Are you guys playing System Shock Remake? I ain't playing I haven't shit. started yet. I am playing shit right now. Yeah, well, uh, I, I just finished Weird West, the latest game by Raphael Studio. And uh, I started System Shock Remake. And I, I've played the original for like uh, an hour and a half uh, a couple of years ago. And it's, a, it's, it's an old ass game. Uh, but the remake, it's just, it's just a blast. I, mean, I beat it. I beat that one in System Shock too, and they were they were very much ahead of their their time. Absolutely, absolutely. And now you can see the the influence of System Shock uh, clearly. Like what, how, how, uh, how much this game has influenced the the industry and the landscape of shooters. Those audio logs, the you know the the pieces of paper that you find, uh, all the clues, all the um, environmental storytelling, and uh, the the story itself is is gruesome. It's vicious. The reveal with Shodan, right? Ah, it's it's bad. Like yeah. they they it make just, cyborgs out of people. It's not just the Vita Chambers from Bioshock. It's evil. <laughs> I mean, it's dark and it's wonderful and it's brilliant. And I, I called it many years ago when I said the future of shooters is RPGs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that tweet. I remember that tweet clearly. All, all, all of these systems that keep make RPGs sticky, you know, wind up being adapted to FPSs, right? Yeah, I, yeah. It's just that passengers. I'm sorry. Those, uh, those, uh, this future is not soon enough. <laughs> but uh, I'm with you. Yeah, but I've always thought, man, shooters need to get deeper and deeper and deeper. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I can't wait. What, what, what they need to do is, you know, uh, you know, we used to say back in the day, keep the disc in the tray, right? And you know, you need to. You, what you want is to be the one game to rule them all. I remember during mm. my my video game career. Um, and my book's out now, by the way. Congratulations on that. Yeah. Thank you. I think it sold like five copies. Um, and uh, uh, I don't know where I was going with that. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those things that, you know, learn, like looking at other genres and how you can blend genres is an utterly like fascinating thing to kind of like study when it comes to video game design. You know, and like, in you know, you know, it's basically you do the flow chart because it always winds up with roguelike elements. Everything winds up with the roguelike elements, and I, my my hypothesis right now about games having those elements is because it it, it adds a somewhat easy way to implement uh, replayability. You know, so it's like you know I played Underminer a ton uh, a couple of years ago, and basically it's just the whole like go back in, go back in, go back in, and it's kind of the same but kind of different. And same thing with Hades, right? Hades was a brilliant game, um, you know, beautiful art style. I kept getting stuck at that first uh, lady with a really cool voice. Um, but it's just, you know, that's the thing. You know, you look at, you know, the, the, the economy of game development and what it takes to make a AAA game these days. And it's just, it's getting so ridiculously expensive. It's fucking crazy, you know? Yeah, hopefully. Don't you think it's going to go um, a little cheaper given... If you look at the history, uh, tools were kind of like not making much progress for decades, whereas... To compensate for that, we had bigger and bigger teams. But now, look at the tools, and they kind of get okay. They're, they're catching up a little bit, so maybe the it will stabilize the teams and lower the budgets little by I little. I mean, that's that's one thing that my old boss Tim Sweeney from Epic knew years ago. He knew how to empower creatives, right? And you know, if you, if you work smarter, not harder, right, and find a way to allow people like me, who you know, the most I could I could do is learn, you know, a little bit of 3D Studio Max, a little bit of Photoshop, a little bit of Deluxe Paint and visual basic but i couldn't learn c plus plus because you know that that part of my brain's not wired that way um and then he just provided you know the unreal editor which you know gave me essentially lego building blocks in order to build environments and you know and then you know my career flourished as a result you know it goes all the way back to jazz jackrabbit that it, i did in the 90s and the fact that you know Ariane bruce made a level editor for it that was incredibly intuitive very easy to use he did the same thing with jazz jackrabbit 2 which still has a flourishing online community. It's uh, jazz2online.com, I believe. And, you know, allow people to mod the games. You know, so much amazing stuff comes out of the mod community, right? So many amazing people came out of, uh, out of the modding community from the starting from the 90s. Yeah, I mean, you look at, like, you know, the whole, like, uh, you know, Dota and, and League of Legends and all that. That, that came out of a World, uh, Warcraft 3 mod, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Counter-Strike was a Half-Life mod. Right. And, you know, like it's the whole thing. And, you know, it's it's not always going to be the AAA developers, you know, from Activision or EA or Microsoft that are innovating. It's often the person in his, you know, uh, parents garage in middle America 
that takes a game that you know modifies it and comes up with something that goes viral and that's just kind of the beauty of it all right yeah absolutely it's that cycle always always you know once you start becoming big you just do what you know how to do and you lose that and then like there's someone out of nowhere that does this thing that everybody looks at now they buy them and then they go big on it. And then this one now just does what it does. Yeah. yeah and that, well, that's the thing. It's, you know, like um, uh, when I when I look at people who, you know, are the ones who hold the money, right, who, you know, are going to uh, fund, uh, you know, an intellectual property, they're going to they're going to create something. And they're like, no, we want existing IP. And it's like, where do you think the existing IP came from in the first place? You <laughs> fucking idiots. You know, like <laughs> somebody had to take a take a risk and be like, OK, so here's a, a young teenager living in, in New York. And he gets bitten by a radioactive spider and then he had, gets all these powers and then his uncle dies. And then there's a, you know, a, a rogues gallery of villains and things like that, you know, and then you wind up, you know, Spider-Man, a bazillion dollar franchise, you know, that, that endures for decades. You know, apparently the new movie is amazing, too, by the way. Side note, I love that that, that kind of animation style is coming in 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 chic, you know, like, did you guys see the trailer for the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie? Yeah. Awesome. Like that, you know, it's a, it's a weird frame rate that kind of like yeah. you, clay you, made, made out of it. clay. Yeah, we, we, right? we, uh, we we've had a, a back in my childhood, we've had a cult classic uh, movie called The Clay Crow. Uh, and the, all the all the characters were made out of clay, and uh, the animation uh, was tied to that physics of clay, and uh, so it's uh, that low frame rate kind of adds up to the to the whole uh, picture and the perception of it. So yeah, this trailer was awesome. Well, it's kind of like Leica, right? You know, with like Coraline and whatnot, right? The whole like stop motion stuff. Like, you know, it, it's a little jarring at first, but then after the first like 30 seconds, you really get used to it. But I'm, I'm gonna look up that movie and uh, see if I can pick it up. Did you guys ever play the old game Clay Fighter? No. Uh, it was a game where they, they, they used, uh, yeah, you know, 2D animated clay sculpture characters for the 3D. Well, it was a 2D, 2D fighter, but they wound up using them for the, for the fighter. And it was uh, it's a, kind of a classic, uh, you know, uh, often forgotten game, much like, much like Booger Man. Yeah, but I rem remember the game called Neverhood. And oh, it, yeah. Uh, and it's yeah, that, also that, that, was that, that stylized. Was, that was with like miniatures or something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, I love it when, you know, developers take risks like that, right? And it's the same thing with, you know, stylizing games. I always have said, you know, uh, you know, technically Borderlands, you know, became a bigger IP than Rage. And, but technically Rage was a better looking game. For the record, my wife worked on it. Um, and the thing is, is Randy Pitchford knew from Gearbox that he's like, look, you know, we're not going to beat them graphically. Let's pivot and stylize the game. And next thing you know, you have, you know, a bazillion, you know, young people at Comic Cons and whatnot and packs like showing up with cell shaded makeup on dressed up as the mm -hmm. characters. And I think that's really fucking cool. Yeah, you yeah. cannot yeah. dress up like a high polygon model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess constraints always uh, help with creativity somehow. Um, that's exactly exactly that, tell I, me about I, it guys. I, i've heard that i've heard that phrase a lot and i really do believe it's true like if you have unlimited freedom when it comes to creativity it's not necessarily the best thing you need dead you, you you know when it comes to creativity you often need deadlines you know and like yeah. i never i never saw everybody working harder back when i was at epic and boss key than when we had a, a convention coming up and we had to have, or we had like you know game informer coming to visit right everyone would be like oh shit People are going to see our work. We better get to fucking work and get the shit polished to, you know, to a T. Uh, and that's, you know, the same thing with, you know, when we moved from, you know, primarily PC development to console development, you know, having to deal with the Xbox controller and the fact that it only had, what, like eight buttons or something like that and trying yeah. to figure out how to use, you know, context sensitivity and things like that and how to, you know, yeah. have buttons that yeah. do multiple, multiple different things, right? That's why the A button was, you know, it, it's, it's dive, take cover, mantle, you know, all that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. But... I, I have I have a little anecdote actually on uh, on prey. Uh, one of the most interesting monster we had. Uh, we, we were like so we, numbers so you, of so, it's, so you worked on that. Yeah, it was the game that I directed. Uh, um, oh, it was cool uh, as shit, man! I had no idea. Awesome. Oh, thank you. The second the the prey twenty seventeen the the latest yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was I was creative director on it, and uh, you were talking game. about uh, you were talking about a monster. 
Yeah, we uh, we were lacking in monsters at some point, and so we were trying to add monsters, except that we did not have any time left and any budget left. So uh, then the idea was, we're going to make this. I, we, we we know, because we did not have more time for animation, so we got, okay, we're going to make this invisible monster. <laughs> and it's uh, it's called the Poltergeist, and it does not have any animation. All it does is that it moves uh just by noise and then it appears and does an attack and then disappears again and it throws some shit at you with physics and uh, it's actually a pretty terrifying monster but had we have the budget we would never have thought of that yeah well i mean if you go, it goes back to you know you know the classic uh, american film jaws right in the fact that yeah the shark that was nicknamed bruce which they wound up naming the shark and finding nemo bruce after that um the fact that, you know, the shark, you know, wouldn't work that well. Right. And so basically like they couldn't show the monster that much. And that's one of the oh, yeah. lessons I've learned over the years. You remember an alien, you know, you, you yeah, barely yeah. see, you barely see the alien. Just the teeth. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, exactly. It goes back to um, Stephen King once said, you know, when the, the lightning crashes and the, the door opens and you're expecting to see, you know, a, 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 a huge bug, you know, part of you is relieved because you were expecting a 40 foot bug and it was only a 20 foot bug. Right. So, you know, so, you know, tease the monsters always, right. Show them as little yep. as possible. And then eventually. Yeah. The, the less defined, the better. Uh, that's, that was the same approach with prey. I mean, it took, you know, we were trying to make monsters that were, uh, not flesh and skin and, and fur and claws and teeth, but instead we were like, what the fuck is that? You know? Yeah, I mean, a, a little bit silhouettes. Silent Hill, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Working on the unknown, yeah. Yeah, but you guys had that reveal, if I recall, where you thought you were like in some sort of domestic or office setting or something like that, and then it what, reveals like you're like in an alien spaceship or world or something, if I recall. It's right, been, it's yeah, been when a while. You, you break the glass, yeah, you break the glass of your of your apartment and you, you find out like, yeah. That that was uh, one of the coolest moments when we were looking at players testing the game for the first time. We just look at their face when you know, when that happened, and it was always that's fun. like that's, that's that's like a would you kindly reveal, right? If you know, from Bioshock, <laughs> Bioshock right? <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. I'll take it. Um, so, what, what are you working so, on now, Raf? Raf? Well, so I left Arcane in twenty seventeen. If, 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 if you can say. Yeah, yeah, I, I can vaguely say. I, so I worked. Arc- I left Arcane in 2017. I uh, then I took a break uh, after you know I had funded Arcane, so I had been with with Arcane for 18 years. I was like super in need of a vacation. Yeah, and you, uh, you, you, wait real quick. You funded it yourself. Yeah. yeah Jesus, I was, man. I was the I was the founder, and uh, I had I had friends. This guy fucks. That- <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> well, you know. I was I was young and naive, so it was just like okay, uh, you know, I had a few friends, and uh, we're like, all right, like, how about we do that? And they just followed me into this crazy adventure. We we're like, when we started Arcane, there was four of us only, and uh, and you know, we just wanted to do RPGs and uh, first, you know, things inspired by let's say Underworld slash Ultima, these kind of games. And, uh, you know, that was my dream, my old time dreams. And I didn't know how hard it would be. So we had no experience. And then our first game was Arx Fatalis, uh, which was no, not perfect, but at least. Well, it, not it, too shabby for the first game, I gotta say. Yeah. And it was a way for us to say, uh, hey, uh, you know how important it is to be clear about what you do. It's clear. It's important because the publishers, the public and the, the developers that you might attract. So we were like, okay, this is what we do, right? It's not perfect yet, but that's what we do. And then it brought us more and more fans of that genre and, and then eventually, uh, dishonored and, 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 um, uh, pray. Ah, uh, um, well, just dishonored was fucking fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. This one was, uh, co-directed with Harvey, uh, Harvey Smith. Well, yeah. Uh, Harvey's, a, Harvey's a friend. Yeah. He's a good guy. Okay, yeah, so yeah. let's back up. So you, 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 18 years and then you take a break. Like, what'd you do? Took a break for, for two years. Yeah. I was mostly focusing on, uh, uh, personal growth, music. Uh, I studied a band back then and, uh, yeah. And just, you know, spending time with my son, vacation, just feeling, you know, like wondering if I really wanted to do more of that because the AAA world, uh, is exhausting. And, and frankly, uh, you know, some of the stuff that the, the can way- I get a hallelujah? Can I get an amen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I assume you can relate. Uh, and yeah, there was some corporate stuff that I was not super happy with, even though like Zenimax was overall a good company to work for. Uh, you know, there was, you know, how corporations are, they might have their 
weird little quirky ideas and policies and i was just so fucking tired of all that yeah uh, so yeah so left and then uh, two years later the itch came back but i wanted to start something maybe uh uh, smaller this time, you know, like focus on the depth. What, what is what I like? RPGs and systems and how they interact with each other and give crazy opportunities to players to have their own experience of the game. Uh, and so that's why, uh, you know, we went with Weird West, which was a fairly cheap game. It's cheaper than any game I've done. Um, but also way, way com- more complex than I thought. Uh, and so now it's, it's a Weird West ship. And uh, now we are working on a new game that, um, even though I can't talk too much about it, it's gonna be an uh, it's gonna be an immersive sim. Yeah, that's that's uh, that that one is clear. So what um, does that mean in this case? I mean, there's so much. The, the definition of the immersive sim well, is I don't, so broad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I, that's why I don't want to talk more about the game specifically that I work on. But like for me, immersive sim is that really uh, uh, that that intersection between um you know the 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 a role playing game to some degree like player choices a, a well made world with a lot of lore and and stuff to 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 discover non linear exploration tons of systems that combine into a simulation not cheating with the player we never we never break the simulation in a way like it's it's rare even if it's not even allowed like we don't do things such as the villain was just in front of you and then now there's a cinematic and the villain leaves or something. Like, we don't do that, right? Like, we, the player feels like they can always do something. And when they can, it's just because they don't have the tools or they don't have the, they're not in the right context to do it. Um, and yeah, so it relies on a lot of simulation. And it's funny because when people say, like, what is immersive sim? It's, it's almost like, uh, you know, there's, I think there's only like 50 games that got the label of immersive sim in, in the history. And it's like the ones who know, know <laughs> kind of thing. But it's, to me, it's more like a set of values, you know, and you, you, you can list them and, you know, uh, uh, but yeah, it's Deus Ex, uh, Arx Fatalis, whatever, whatever games you want to go back to, the, go back to the ultimate games, right? Yeah, yeah. I think Ultima, frankly, Ultima six at least or five even, was started to bring those concepts. Where uh, an example for me of something that you can only find in, uh, find in immersive sims, and, it, and it's like RPGs, right? You could like list, okay, there are ten things. It doesn't mean that there's ten things need to be in to be an, an RPG. So it's the same with immersive sims. But some of those ten things are you can kill anyone, even the good guys. That's something that I've always loved. Uh, and uh, in so Ultima, it's, it's, you can it's, it's totally the, do that. It's the Oblivion series, right? Yeah, Oblivion can do that too, where you kill the the the, the quest giver, and on the quest giver, there are the, there is the object that you, the quest giver was going to give you anyway. But like otherwise, you know, you feel bad, so it plays on your own morality, on your own guilt. You reload. Those are feelings that are for me incredible for players to feel. Um, and so, and that relies really on the simulation. I guess that's why people call them immersive sims. Hey, but, but I can, I, I want to get my wife to tell you a quick anecdote. Oh, right. Okay. Um, Skyrim. It was, was it Whiterun? Oh yeah, it was Whiterun. Hello. 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 How are y'all doing today? This episode gets better Good, and are better. You? Thank you. <laughs> totally reminds me of No Ho Hank. Oh yeah, so um, I guess my Skyrim um, experience, uh, basically, okay, I, I haven't thought of this story in a very long time, but um, so yeah, I went to White Run, and then I basically, I made a house, and I used to be like a hoarder like everybody else, and so my house, like you would get in, the, I played on the Xbox, I would get on, I would just like stutter, because the, the game, the Xbox couldn't handle how much junk I had in there, so, um, but I basically, I, I spent a lot of time in that house, and I did a storyline where all of a sudden I came back to the right one, white run and the whole place was like burning down and my house was burnt down. And I remember just like throwing my controller and I'm just in tears and Cliff comes in the room. He's like, what is wrong with you? I was like, I, I don't have another save point that auto saved. I just lost everything. I just spent like a thousand hours on because there's like white run is like, is, is done. I tweeted it and everybody's like, oh yeah, just finish the storyline and then everything will come back. I was like, oh, but that was about it. I was like, this is a lot of stories with, with Skyrim, right? But it was, uh, I was the drama queen um, for a little bit. Yeah, no, that's, that's yeah, understandable. Get in your stream. Yeah, my stream is live right now. So I gotta go for it. Bye, thanks. Bye, Have a nice one. Bye. Uh, yeah. 
I think I think this is a uh, uh, this is a nice spot to say hello to everyone. Uh, uh, what's up, everyone? Welcome to this episode of the House of the Dev podcast. As always, we've got Rafael Calantonio from Austin, Texas. Hi, Raf. Hello, Peter. And, and our special guest for tonight is probably the loudest and the brightest of all the industry's frontman, the designer of Gears of War, Unreal, Unreal Tournament, creative mind behind many old and modern day classics, Mr. Clifford Blazinski. Hi, and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me, both of you. Um, and uh, Raf, Austin's lovely, by the way. You are entering the house of the dead. It is. Thank you. I've been. Uh, I mean, it's not. You know, it's not. Not my doing, but I've been here for t for 18 years now. <laughs> but uh, uh, Peter, Peter, really you, Peter, you should should have referred to me as the most loved and hated game developer of all time. <laughs> well, that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll it we'll usually goes that. together. Yeah. Usually goes together. What, what I always say, what I always say, lads, is you know you, you're allowed to be confident in any other business, in politics, in sports, in as a chef, you know, as a, anything, right? But if you're a confident game developer, the internet wants to tear you the fuck down and just and, and come at you. And it's just it's it's I've been dealing with this shit since 1990, and it's it's fucking exhausting. You know, at some point, and that's the thing I I tweeted a couple days ago. It's like, you know. Um, if you know you're you're mean to me on 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 social media, I'm gonna come at you five times harder. If you're kind to me, I'm gonna I'm gonna come at you in a good way ten times harder. Like, cause you know some random uh, fan, I was talking about you know Hollywood and, and Broadway and things like that, and and writing a book and all that. And he's like, in my comic book that, that drops uh, July uh, July nineteenth for the record. Um, and he's like, well, you know, I'm I'm a struggling writer, blah blah blah. So you know, my my, my DMs are like private. But, you know, I'm like, fuck this shit. You know, I, I I followed him. I was like, DM me some links to some of your work. So I literally have his screenplay sitting in my man bag that I'm going to start reading tonight. And I'm going to give him some feedback and see if I can make some connections. Um, you know, it's I always like supporting creatives, right? Especially, you know, game developers. And just, you know, I just really feel like the gaming landscape is, I don't know if it's just my perception, guys, but I feel like things have gotten exponentially more toxic the last 10 to 15 years. Am I, am I high? No, you're right. I think there's oh, a lot. Of, yeah, you might be high. Clans. We can't judge you for that. I'll be. I'll be high later. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's definitely a lot of uh, clans and secrecy. Like, where, and frankly, uh, also because there are less and less um, big independent developers. I think when we were independent uh, at Arcane, we were like collaborating with anyone. Uh, we were very in, into network. We were very into, uh, and by network, I mean networking with people. Uh, we would invite our friends from other companies to test the games, etc. And then, of course, when you're part of a corporation, all this goes away. You know, like, no, now everything is secretive. Now you can, you know, if you, if you test your game, it's not to be, you know, whatever. And then now we have to pay them. If we don't pay them, if they test the game, then they might sue us. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's so funny because super serious. so back in the day with Gears 1, um, again, being good friends with Randy Pitchford, he actually came to Raleigh and uh, play tested Gear, Gears 1 and gave us uh, feedback. And then um, ironically, uh, you know, when I was first started talking to the missus, um, and, you know, they're, they were based out of uh, Plano, I think at the time or something like that in Dallas. And, uh, I went to go play test Borderlands, uh, the first one, obviously. And then what happened was, uh, you know, I only play tested it for like four or five hours and then just fucked off to meet Lauren and then fall completely madly in love. Um, but I, that, that's, that's the, the beauty of the industry when it works is when like-minded devs, you know, because it's a, the industry is a lot like family. Right. It's a tiny, tiny, it's a big business, but it's a tiny business at the same yeah. time. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I tell people, don't be a dick. Cause I've, uh, yeah. I've had people, I've had, you know, I had people apply to Epic. I had people apply at Bosky and using my extensive network, I'd slide into one of my friend's DMs and be like, Hey, what about this person? They're like, no, they're crazy. Don't hire them. I'm like, you know, so don't be a dick. Yeah, it goes fast. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. What, what do you do by the way now? Oh, uh, me? Personally, yeah, in in the game industry, you're not doing anything in the games. I'm doing some consulting and investing. Um, okay. uh, there's, uh, I, I can't really say a lot about it right now. Um, I did invest in a, a, a this really really cool technology called uh, Atom Montage, um, and it's uh, kind of like Roblox meets Minecraft by way of micro voxels. 
Um, and you basically, you literally like they, and the thing about, as you all, we all know, you know, when you have a polygonal model, you know, if you go inside of it, you know, it's nothing inside of it, right? The, this, the voxels provide density. So, you know, mm-hmm. they have like a scan of like a, a rat's heart. You can go to the website right now and check it out at a montage.com. Um, and then, uh, you know, my comic book, like I said, drops, uh, July 19th. That's going to be a six issue series. I signed with image comics. Uh, and I'm looking up, watching the history of Image Comics is fascinating to me. Um, you know, I've known Jim Lee for years from uh, at DC. And, uh, you know, the fact that these uh, rogue artists, uh, you know, like snuck out and did their own thing is just amazing to me. And then I'm doing more Broadway producing. I co-produced this one, uh, wound up winning uh, eight Tonys. Uh, and then I'm co-producing the Britney Spears Broadway musical Once Upon a One More Time. And uh, we're going to go up to New York and see that uh, later this month and go to the opening night. And if I get to meet Brittany, my head's going to explode because I've loved her from day <laughs> one. Um, and then, you know, uh, working and noodling on other IP. The thing about, you know, the dog comic that I'm working on is, you know, Raph, you as a creative in the games industry, you know, it's for me, at least it's always been about the verbs. You know, what are you doing? Are you running? Are you jumping? Are you shooting? Are you chainsawing? Are you taking a dump? Like, what are you doing? Right. <laughs> And for me, with the dog thing and the comic, you know, I, you know, partnering with an amazing writer, you know, I was able to make a, an IP in a world that is basically like is surgically built to be a video game or Netflix series or a toy line. And, um, you know, I'm funding it myself. So I own 100 percent of the IP and, uh, you know, knock on wood, you know, I think it's really, really promising. And I'm really, really excited. I, I, I said on Twitter, I haven't been this excited since Gears 1, but. Yeah, and then I co own two restaurants. Also, I uh, just um, a little hungover from karaoke night last night. It's a it's a pretty good it's it's a pretty good high to be able to go to your own beer garden and to see these people buying beer and liquor and pretzels and to then sing poorly in front of them and realize they're all paying me money to see me sing poorly. And, um, <laughs> no, we're not gonna take it right. Um, but you know, I'm just kind of, I feel like, you know, we talk about these immersive systems and things like that. I feel like me personally, my life is like an RPG. That's finally the full open world has opened up, (laughs) you know, seeing where things go next, you know, that sounds sounds great. great. Yeah. Clifford, the thing uh, that I I wanted to ask you about, um, about this, these businesses that you do, uh, is, uh, is your experience from the gaming industry coming in, in handy in some ways? Because, you know, being a creative in many industries means that you can be creative in some other industry uh, or being uh, an executive manager in, uh, in any under, other industry means that you need to gain um, additional perks to I mean to to run a studio for example a video game studio or a or a movie studio but you still you have got your executive manager foundation so can we talk a bit about that I mean I mean Raph you're creative um like and that's the thing is you know I literally have this tattoo on my arm I can't see it it's uh it says create Right. To remind me that, you know, I'm happiest when I'm creating, when I'm making worlds that people care about, when people, you know, yeah, I like money, you know, I like to eat prime rib once a week, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, learning that everything in the world, as Raph, you obviously know, everything in the world is systems, right? And it's it's up to us to solve those systems and to figure them out. And so my new addiction is learning new businesses, you know, learning about, you know, Mm -hmm. learning about restaurant business, learning about hospitality, learning about how the capitalization of Broadway shows works, uh, learning about uh, comic books, uh, learning how, you know, the publishing world works in regards to writing a book. And, you know, I'm currently studying also stand up comedy uh, because one of these days I'm going to try and do open mic. I'm probably going to fucking bomb. But, you know, (laughs) learning like callbacks and act outs and things like that. You know, becoming friends mm-hmm. with a lot of stand-up comedians and just, you know, I just, my thing is, you know, I, I think, you know, yeah, I'm still doing some consulting in the video game space, but, you know, I think I, I pretty much had that business figured out. But, you know, learning all of these industries to me has been utterly fascinating. And I just, I, I'm like, I'm just hungry, you know, I'm 48 years old and I just want to know, like, what's next? What else can I do? What else? Is there another industry I can, you know climb mostly to the top of and see if I can figure it out. And it's just, it's one big journey, 
you know, and I just, if I, you know, also if I can help fledging artists along the way, uh, you know, then, you know, karma, I believe is a real thing. You know, that's why I say, you know, you get what you put out in the universe, you know, you get back. And so, you know, still studying, still learning systems, 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 right? Yeah, sounds like a great, great spirit to be in. I think um, I feel you about like some 52. Uh, and yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Like you, you know, you went uh, far into one industry and uh, then you're thinking like, what do I do now? Like I can keep going either further there, but it's like you've been really so far already. So you might think, you know, hey, there's all these other things that are super interesting and some of them might benefit from my experience there. And that's what it sounds like. And you have this hunger for for knowing more and learning more stuff, which is really cool. It's cool to be in this position. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm, ironically, I'm an atheist, but I'm saying that I'm blessed. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, is, you know, I believe in my heart of hearts, you know, like making video games is generally a younger person's kind of thing. Like I think about my work ethic when I was in my twenties, my, my teens, my twenties, my thirties, you know, like I, I somehow, and not to flex, but it's just the, the stone cold truth. I managed to ship the first unreal and jazz Jackrabbit two at the same time. Like I, you know, uh, you know, I didn't drink back then made up for it since, you know, and uh, it's uh, one of those things, you know, and I'm not a, like a billionaire, but I'm comfortable. You know, I live in a big stupid McMansion. Um, but I'm careful with my money. I thankfully married a woman who's not out, you know, at Saks Fifth Avenue buying Jimmy Choo's every fucking week. You know, her biggest expenses are like her makeup and her Doc Martens. And I'm like, you're, you're a Twitch streamer now, honey. Write that shit off. Um, and just, it, it, oh, by the way, can we talk about Twitch for a minute? Sure. Like, that's the thing, Raph. I, you know, we're in, we're in a world where, you know, if you don't have, you know, the influencers, you know, promoting your stuff you know, if you're not on the front page of twitch in a lot of ways you're dead in the water like am i am i wrong like yeah for sure i mean like you're talking about whatever products you're trying to sell like in our case games yeah it's it's all about that and that's that's the thing it's also same thing with her you know you know she's getting decent traction on doing the twitch thing twitch.tv slash l337 lauren for the record um and, but the thing is, is you know like you know she she's studying her numbers afterwards and I told her, I'm like, you got to be careful with that stuff because, you know, I I, per I personally don't look at how many followers I have on any social media platform because uh, if you if you, if it will drive you insane. Yeah. Right. And the thing is, you know, we we are all slaves to these algorithms these days, these arbitrary algorithms that programmers come up with. And like I will like, you know, even like the, the Twitter algorithm is so fucking lazy because, you know, somebody like, you know, I made a comment about being an atheist or something like that the other day. And they're like. Oh, you're parroting Andrew Tate, you know, that piece of shit MMA guy. And uh, and so I was like, no, I didn't mean to do that. That guy can F off, right? And then it did the whole, like, most tweeters don't like replies like that. I'm like, this is the laziest fucking algorithm I've ever fucking seen. I'm, I'm, I'm like violently agreeing with these people, right? And it's just like, you know, and like even if you, if you just curse a little bit, you go down in the stack, right? And it's mm -hmm. just, it's, it's such fucking bullshit. And like for her to have to like figure out, you know, what time does she stream? How long does she stream? You know, that's the thing about, about streamers. I respect them so much, but I'm friends with some full-time ones, right? And they're all fucking depressed because they have to be on, mm. for, literally on, like, what's up, guys? How's it going? For like six to eight hours a fucking day. Yeah. Like Broadway performers only have to be on for uh, two and a half hours, uh, you know, eight times a week, right? Like the, these kids have to be animated. They have to play the video game. They have to fucking look good, especially, it's especially hard for women. And then, you know, you, you have to have like your chat up. You have to like have your little plugins. You have a, a stream set up that's put together with duct tape and bubble gum. It's fucking exhausting, man. Yeah. And it, it changes fast as well. You have to adapt all the time. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, what do you what do you play? You know, like, do you play like, you know, like she's playing Diablo 4, which, by the way, it looks great. But again, horse armor, full circle. Um, and it's one of those things that, you know, like the, she's like trying to feel out like what she gets you know, like the most views on blah, 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 blah. And she's making a little bit of money. You know, I call it beer money, you know, but the thing is, is, you know, she has her purpose, you know, now, like she, I told her she should have been doing this years ago. But the thing is, you know, I told her when we first started dating, you can't just be Cliff's wife. You need to be your own person. And that that's finally happening. And I'm so fucking proud and excited for her. But yeah, it's just the, the world we live in now. It's, you know, social media, it, 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 it helps and it hurts just as much equally. Yeah, streaming is yeah. hard, man. Uh, we've been doing uh, Twitch streams for 
four years, I believe, uh, with the team. And then we, we just quit. Be- we, we, we had a talk inside the team and uh, we decided to, to do another shit because this is very time consuming. And uh, if you want to do this and that and uh, play some music, uh, follow your dreams and make your game and uh, you want to you wanna pump up your p- personal projects and you want to do business development and uh, a lot of intense stuff is going around you. Uh, every day, you cannot just go and play uh, board games on stream for like six hours straight. You kind of sit out there with the thought that I could have done something more valuable at this fucking moment. Or even if you just sit along uh, with the web camera and all that bubble gum and duct tape stuff around you, then somebody in your chat goes rude about something uh, and that that hurts you, but you gotta stay fucking calm. You're, you're just playing a game, make you know, make your face like you're enjoying it. <laughs> that is, I mean, uh, your yeah, wife is is a very strong woman. I I truly I, respect that. Thank you. Yeah, and I feel we also. I mean, I personally have uh, finally made the move of uh, deleted Twitter, Facebook, Instagram from my phone. It doesn't mean I don't have an account because, you know, I do have an account and on my PC, sometimes I look at it uh, mostly for, because I am not always on my PC, then it always protects me from something. But this full, this full thing of social media all the time with the full model, right? Of like ads and this and, you know, and trying to be hustling all the time. It's just something that I start to reject at the personal level. uh, And I understand why people do it. And, you know, we all caught in the same thing and, it's one way to make money. It's one way to, to be part of the world, etc. And uh, I respect that. Personally, I'm trying to... Uh, um, it's almost like a drug. You know, there's something that... Or sugar, let's say. It's almost like sugar. Like, yeah. There's a moment where I feel like this is not good for me. There's a moment I, I need to, uh, you know, I need to... Tr- be more grounded in real life. More it's, 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 good, it's good for your mental health, man. Right? Like, and that's mm. the thing is, you know, when my, my studio was declining, Bosky... Uh, my dog, uh, that's my little shrine to him back there. Um, he was declining and I had to put him down as my, I had to put my studio down and the internet, internet thought it was fucking hilarious. So I literally deleted most social from my phone because it it was way too easy to just read that shit when I'm sitting in a pub with my wife, you know, and just like, I, I, you know, I, it's also Twitter is fucking acting like a piece of shit on my fucking Android these days. I don't know what the fuck's going on there. Um, but that's actually a good thing. Cause I can't like reply to people on my phone. You know, I have to literally sit, be sitting in my PC, but social media, you know, I, the thing I said on Twitter the other day was, you know, it was meant to unite us, but you know, ultimately it's wound up dividing us. Mm-hmm. And, and I just, the thing is, is, you know, you look at like, you know, like the algorithms, right. And the fact that, you know, like, you know, I have a palm ski, right. And she's mostly husky and I love her so fucking much, but I wound up going down the YouTube, you know, uh, real video or Instagram real videos of, of huskies acting out, you know, they're, they're howling and everything like that. And it fucking slays me. And then it caught on to that. And then it's just like, and like the thing is, is, you know, like with my dog comic, I'm like, do I have to make a fucking TikTok for this? Do I have to get on fucking TikTok? Like it's, it's the same thing with like, if you want to watch a TV show. You know, I'll tell a friend like, oh, watch the the Mike Flanagan show Midnight Mass. And it's like, what silo is it on? And like, it's on Netflix. And then, but I still, the other thing is like, is it on Hulu? Is it on Paramount Plus? Is it on Apple TV? Like, what the fuck? Like, we get back to just bit torrenting shit. <laughs> yeah. And aside from that, living in the world of uh, freaking notification just sucks. I mean, do all we really, my, do we really need my, that? My phone is completely on silent all the time and all my notifications are completely off. I've come to this uh, about four years ago and I've read in Harvey Smith's Twitter that he did that recently. And I was like, whoa, you guys held up for a long time. My phone is also, it's always uh, the moon, do not disturb. And if I want to check something, I just go myself and I fucking check it. I mean, yep. my mom or my wife or my son or my re- other relatives, my close friends, they can phone me anytime because they're yeah. in the special list. All the other guys just can't wait. The thing is, I don't know how it is over there, but in the States, the robocall bullshit has gone through the fucking roof the last yes, few years. Yes, absolutely. And so absolutely. If, it's, if it's a number I don't recognize, I'm like, fuck off. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, 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 we live in a world of distractions. It's the thing is on my phone, I have a sticker 
that says book slut. And so, you know, I'm, I'm either in video game mode or reading mode, right? I'm currently reading uh, Carrie Byron's book. Uh, she was the uh, was brilliant, adorable girl on uh, Mythbusters. Um, and f- weird flex, she's a friend of mine. Um, and the thing is, I love sitting at a pub with the missus and just reading a book. You know, she still loves her loves her gaming. You know, she's hacking her Steam Deck as we speak and tw- and, and and twitching about it. Um, you know, she literally is still playing Pokemon Go on her two phones. Like she plays, she it's it's her therapy. And that's the thing about video games that I will always love, though, to get to bring it full circle is, you know, there's that a book that, that, that was written by, I can't, maybe it was Malcolm Gladwell, I can't recall, a book called Flow. And the idea mm-hmm. is once you get in that that state of flow, right? Like, you know, and, and I have that when I read a book or I play a great video game and, you know, it, I've never had a better sense of flow than the Tetris experience. Like, did you guys have a chance to see the movie? I nope. haven't, but it's, uh, I, I've heard it's really good. I mean, as as a dev dude, like you should really check it out. Um, and you know, Peter, as a Russian, I was worried that Alexei <laughs> Pizh- uh, Alexei Pizhitnov would not get enough representation in it, and it, they they did. You know, and I, it was so funny back in the day when you think about Tetris and you know the whole Cold War between the U.S. and 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 Russia, and the fact that we uh, Americans thought it was some sort of Soviet mind control game because it was it's in my opinion one of the greatest games ever made. It's just it's fucking hilarious and. You know, playing it in the Nintendo World Championships. And when I first started dating Lauren, I realized she was the real deal because we played Tetris in the DS and she actually beat me. And I consider myself a really fucking <laughs> Tetris player. So. Can we talk about first person shooters, maybe? Just a little bit? I mean, can we talk about, can we talk about John Romero? Yes, we can. John, 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 John was my, my model for like being a, a rock star game designer right yeah you know i remember seeing him in wired magazine you know with his ferrari in front of his big mansion and i was just like working on my games and i was like oh I'll, i'm gonna be like that one day <laughs> right um and then you know then he and i eventually became friends um you know it was like some rocky and apollo creed type shit um and yeah it's one of those things that you know fps is uh you know I I always say Call of Duty will always be popular because shooting people through iron sights at 60 frames a second will never not be satisfying, right? <laughs> Raf, your 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 take on that? Uh yeah, no, I agree. I mean like there's something very very uh visceral and and direct uh about first person shooters that yeah, will never will never go away. I I do think you know, you said something interesting when you said the future of of, RP, of uh, first person shooter is RPGs. I, you know, I'm all up for that, and I've, that's what I've been trying to do for 25 years. Um, because I do think that bringing context to shooting, uh, bringing meaning, bringing choices, uh, suddenly enhance the experience much more. I personally don't. I mean, I do like the, the, of course, like, you know, when Doom came up and you just shoot at things, it's just incredibly satisfying. Um, and while trying to save your life and hiding behind things, I mean, like that, that essential, uh, fundamental gameplay is so, yeah, it grabs you. It's so, yeah, so but powerful. there is a lot of context provided exactly. to you. So a- action doesn't matter. You are a that. Doom Slayer. That's why you don't ask questions. Oh, Do- Doom Eternal was so it, fucking tight. Um, it, yeah, yeah. In this case, it works. It's true. Um, um, but I do like choices. I do like other ways to 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 express, you know, uh, how how I'm what I'm why I'm going to do what I'm going what I'm going to doing. Uh, I mean, doing. It, it, action doesn't matter without context, right? You know, right. the fact the fact that uh, you know, like when you look at superhero films these days, right? And it's like you know, they just it's like the directors just get lazy and they're just like, ah, oh, just throw a big CG battle at it, blah blah blah. And it's like I've said this on other podcasts. Like one of my favorite scenes was from a. Uh, uh, Avengers Age, Age of Ultron, I believe, where Cap and uh, and Iron Man are kind of having a debate in like, you know, at, at, at this farmhouse, right? Uh, you know, which ultimately led to like the whole Civil War thing, right? And, you know, Cap, you know, takes, you know, they have this argument, he just takes the wood and breaks it in half. Like, they're not wearing their costumes, you know, but they're having a philosophical debate. And that 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 makes, you know, Act 3 actually fucking matter, right? And I believe that's so true also in video games, 
right? Mm-hmm. Like the fact that, you know, in, in gears, Mark, you know, Marcus and Dom were looking for Maria. And then we set up the fact that the locusts torture people, you know, beyond recognition. And then he has to kill his own fucking wife. You know, in my opinion, that was a fucking a great move to, you know, pat myself on the back. That scene is just the worst in in all the video games, in all the well, that's The, the thing is, is we, I, was, got, I was slammed by it. We got so much shit. Well, you know, when the series was coming out, well, this is just a dude, bro, shooter, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 and, it's and, not. Well, I love going to YouTube and fucking seeing the comments and how we made people cry. And by the way, a raff about Dishonored. I'm feeling bad at the moment because of this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so let's, let's pivot. So Dishonored, like the fact that you start off with such limited abilities and it seems kind of like a slow-paced kind of game. But then when you eventually get all the abilities and you see that this guy's essentially a fucking ninja and, you know, the, the way he could kind of blink around and fucking like fuck shit up. Masterful. So mad respect. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it was iterative. I mean, as you know, I, I, I wish I could say, well, it was all planned from the get go, but it's a lot of it is like, you know, a lot of it's just iteration. Well, I mean, so much of game course. development is it's it's it's, it's that's the thing I learned about, you know, re- the restaurant business in Broadway. You know, like right now, the Britney Spears uh, Broadway musicals in in what they call previews after it, it had a short run in D.C. as a test run. But before that, they do what's called a workshop where they, you know, iterate, 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 work on the choreography, work on the lighting, work on the dialogue, work on the music, of course, like, you know, all of that. And, you know, with restaurants, you know, we do what's called the friends and family, you know, a soft opening. And then, you know, you see what works in the menu, you see what doesn't, you know, and so much of life. Is iteration, you know. I'm on, I'm on my 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 second and final marriage, for the record, you know. And and when I first got with my wife, I was like, I like ABC. I will not put up with X Y Z. And she's like, We can do that, and you make it work. And that's <laughs> that's you know, as my first wife said, we learn balance by falling, right? Speaking about uh, shooters becoming RPGs, in your opinion, uh, guys, d- d- does this work in reverse? Because I think that m- many <laughs> modern day RPGs could learn a lot from action games. I mean, take Weird West, the latest game by Raphael Studio, uh, and I personally believe this is a great action RPG, and the, the, the tale of the isometric immersive sim just confuses many people i mean uh, the people who know what that means uh they know but uh if you're just a random guy from the street you you probably will have many questions but uh weird west is uh, still uh, it's it's a great action rpg where you role play not through dialogues not through dialogue based skill checks and all that traditional stuff you role play through action i mean uh, playing as a pigman, you you can help people, or you can just um, terrorize the town, uh, break into a school, uh, kill the teacher, and kill all the kids and eat them. Uh, do you remember many games with kids in the first place? I think in, that in, in, in America and the current political climate. Yeah, it's a, it, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's I a, remember a, Fallout that's, Three. That's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it works out for him. Absolutely. I, I remember Fallout Three and the debate uh, around Fallout Three, where you had uh, um, invulnerable kids, and that. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah. it's not that I want to kill kids in games or not in games, but it's it just makes things work. It, it's it's a part of the simulation. But I mean, yes, yeah. Yes, as, I mean, I can't imagine, you know, if I had kids, I don't have any kids that I know of. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm a, I love my I love my dog so much. Right. So like anytime you can kill a dog in a game that's not actively yeah. attacking you, it breaks my heart, you mm-hmm. know, and like in a bad way. So, I mean, that's, you know, Rod Ferguson, my producer on Gears was, you know, he lost some relatives to lung cancer and, you know, he didn't want our characters to smoke. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's a very personal decision. You know, you want to give player choice, but there's also an artistic choice there, too. Right. Like, you, you know, I always say to devs, make your stuff personal. Like, Raf, what's your take on this, man? Well, so to, to be to be accurate, uh, in the case of the kids in, in Weird West, you cannot kill them. Uh, they, uh, oh, they shit, actually I didn't check. And See that? And they See run that? away. I didn't yeah. check. And, that's, <laughs> and that is because... Yeah, I mean, kids plus, I mean, you know, while I think the law is like as long as the law, the rule or whatever to get like, uh, you know, your game approved is like as long as you don't encourage people to do things such as, you know, killing a dog, killing kids or, or, 
uh, or beating up, you know, in like GTA 4 or whatever, like you can beat up prostitutes. It's not like it's Anchorage, right? It's, it's, uh, it's like part of the simulation, like the systems work the way they do. And then eventually someone can do that and post it on a YouTube video. And then people are going to comment and, and say, you know, this game is, uh, it's about uh, hitting again. people with your car. Yeah. 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 Whatever, you know. Yeah. That, so, that becomes, that uh, becomes the, that becomes the headline of the narrative, right? Yeah, exactly. So like, where do you draw the line? Right. Because like I, love um, a simulation so much i love possibilities i love the fact that even if it creates like some sort of a discomfort when you do it like you know there's there's been game where like maybe like in the middle of middle of a fight a dog got killed or something or like even a character that i kind of liked and uh and, and you go like ah well i'm gonna reload you know um and that that's fine for me like you know like the fact that you do see the consequence of what would have happened if if you really went that route uh, in, in Arx Fatalis, we had this thing where, uh, you could, you know, there was this, uh, big character who was actually a troll, but he was a nice troll. And, uh, it was, his, it was his birthday and he wanted you to bring some presents so that you could get the flute that he's actually playing with. And because the flute was part of a bigger quest or whatever. And, uh, the reality is you could just like kill the troll and, uh, and you die dramatically on the floor in front of you and you feel bad. You can loot the, the body and get this flute. I mean, pretty, pretty similarly into an Ultima game back in the days. And uh, that always stays with me, you know, as, um, as something that is important in games. So now the question is, while well, you do that with trolls, you do that with men, you do that with women, you do that with kids, you do that with dogs. I don't know. I, I'll, you know, I'll go with, uh, context matters. It's, it's, player, it's, well. it's also player agency you want, right? Absolutely. So it's, it's, su it's such a fine, it's such a fine balance. I'll never forget. It's uh, a fine balance, yeah. I think it was Ultima Seven where I like it was nighttime and I wound up going into this uh, farmhouse and just completely murdering this this uh, married couple. I think you could skin them too, like or maybe that was okay. uh, Ultima Online. But yeah, I was I was a little dick back in the day. Um, but yeah, Ultima Online though um, was just the ultimate like troll MMO. Like like <laughs> yes, my wife still plays WoW, and it, like I just WoW just bothers me because it just feels like a series of busy work. It's, it feels like a fancy fucking chat room to me. Um, very, very protected, yeah, yeah, it's true. Uh, but like like Ultima Online was savage as fuck. Oh my god, yeah, I had I have so many memories from Ultima Online yeah, because you you kill, you kill people and they turn to a ghost and they watch you stealing all their shit. They cry, yeah, and skinning yeah. their bodies and be ooh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it's funny. so weird. Yeah, it's so interesting. And and and, so and that also, is what I'm talking about. It's it's role yeah. play through action. It's it's but how you also, behave and how you feel afterwards. Yeah, and that's all these dicks that give space for the good players. You know, by good I mean like the the the, the kind players. Because uh, when when I would see someone like you're talking about, you know, like in Ultima Online, to just to go back to that game, when, when you would see someone who dies uh, attacked by by monsters, not necessarily by p killers, then I would I would loot the the thing, you know. And uh, I would see the ghost like being all crazy and crying and so etc. And then like going away and then like maybe eventually come back and I would still be there and hand him his bag, uh, just in case some other people want you know. And so it made me feel good. And the the the, the opportunities to being bad, if I had wanted, also uh, made the gave brought the the opportunity to be good. You know, gave meaning to my actions more than if all I could do is being good. You know. I think play. I honestly think player agency really reveals the true nature of a person, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. It's the same thing, you know. There, there's that. Uh, do you guys watch uh, Rick and Morty? Yeah, yeah. There's that end credit scene where they play X gonna give it to you, where uh, Rick and uh, Summer get all jacked and like they beat the shit out of like Nazis and shit. And there's like a guy who takes his dog and like yanks it. You know, like it's the term that I use is establishing character shot. Right. And, mm -hmm. you just, and it's the same thing with, you know, hospitality. When I would be, you know, looking to hire people at Epic or Boss Key, you know, I take them to lunch and I'd look at how they treat the servers. And if they treated the mm -hmm. servers shitty, no, fuck off. You're done. You know, these people work their fucking asses off. And if you're going to be a dick to them, you're just a dick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that simple. <laughs> it's true, yeah. And games games allow you to do that, yeah. And in fact, it's interesting in those games that allow you to be good or bad. 
it's hard to be bad. I mean, it feels bad, you know, uh, if the game is well made and you can really. Well, what were the two choices in Mass Effect? Paragon and uh, Rogue or something like that? If I recall. Yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't remember Paragon. I can't remember the other one. Uh, but yeah, it, it's like usually for a second playthrough. Renegade. You know, when I go bad. Renegade. Renegade, Renegade, yeah. Renegade, yeah. And, and when, I, when I go bad on a second playthrough, usually not on my first one. If I do that on a, on a second playthrough, I try to go bad. I try to be, to, you know, just, just like take counterintuitive. Uh, and even then I'm like, uh, this time, you know, I know I'm supposed to be bad, but it's really hard here. So I'm just not going to be bad this, on, in this instance. It's hard. Rough. Yeah, you also have like, uh, uh, remind yourself that, you know, you're a creative, you work in video games and you, you want to see all the possibilities, you know, like. That's you know, right. Yeah. You know, saying like your average person, you know, like uh, how, how are they going to act in the game? And I, uh, you know, it's the whole, the chart of chaotic neutral versus chaotic evil and all that stuff. Right. Like where, where are you going to, where are you going to land? Right. Yeah, it's, it's um, just it's it's a fascinating study in human psychology when you think about it. It's just got fucking deep. Yeah, I do think most players are want to be good and want to do good things, and uh, occasionally. Uh, but the fact that there's this possibility again that is luring, you know, they know like they could be bad, but then they don't. Then I think it, whew, you know, just that, just the fact that it was there, you could have killed him and taken the thing directly, even if you reload. But you know, it's there. It's so it's very powerful. You're, you're reminding me, Bungie did this top-down strategy game back in the day called Myth, right? Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, they, Bungie Bungie's great. Um, I'm actually having a Zoom call with uh, Alexander Seropian soon. Um, but yeah, small world. Um, anyway, so what happened is, uh, you know, there's the character like who's a little innocent farmer, and he had his pumpkins. And like the voiceover is like, what's going to happen to my pumpkins? And one of my level designers in the first Unreal is like, I'll show you what happens to your fucking pumpkins. And he like blew them up. <laughs> I'm like, damn, that was a dick move, you know? Yeah, that gnome with the with the uh, f- grenades or some sort of cocktail, it was uh, a bit chaotic. He throws it and everything goes to shit. <laughs> Your about, troops, about, enemies, think, farmers, and pumpkins. <laughs> when you think about, you know, shooters and, and RPGs, you know, you think yeah. about de- Destiny, right? I mean, what, you know, what, what they did was they, they melded so many elements from, like, RPGs and MMOs into that. And, you know, mm-hmm. it's, I'm not a big fan of the art style. It's just me being a dick. Um, but, you know, it's, you know, massive success for them, you know, and the thing about RPG elements, as you obviously know, all of you is that, you know, it creates what we, we call in the industry stickiness. You know, the fact that, you know, people want to, you know, keep playing, they want to come back, they want to see the numbers go up, they want to do the grind, right? And that's, mm-hmm. you know, fucking wow, wow, to, wow, completely took over for so many times. I remember Back in the day, I've told this anecdote before where I'd be, you know, talking to people, you know, out, you know, in a party or a bar or whatever. And be like, what do you do? I make video games. And like, oh, I play WoW. And that's it. That was all anybody ever played for like a decade. Right. And it just yeah. became a phenomenon. And my, and my wife to this day still plays it. And it's just, you know, it's just a testament to, you know, Blizzard's design uh, brilliance, honestly. So, and uh, hey, is that merger gone through? Have you seen the news in regards to Microsoft buying them? I, I th- isn't it blocked? I thought it was blocked by England or something. I, I think the government got in the way, right? They, they're, I, mean, I, I, think it's, it's, I think it's the British government that, that, that got in the way. Possibly. I, I need to look it up. But yeah, that's a crazy one. Like the, the amount of like mergers and acquisitions going on right now. Yeah. What do you think of that? Is it, is it, do you think it, it's a good thing or a bad thing? I like indie studios. You know, the only games I play these days are little indie platformers on my Switch, like Shovel Knight and Celeste and things like that. Um, and it's just one of those things like, you know, I mean, Raph, you've, you've seen the numbers. Like, you know exactly like how much it costs to make these these AAA games, right? And like, you know, for me, when I had my studio and to see the the the, the coffers go tick, tick, ticking down, you know, because I, I did pay my employees really reasonable, fair salaries. I didn't take a salary for two years when I had my studio, um, but the internet still thought it was hilarious when it it, it declined. Fuck him. Yeah, yeah, dude. Seriously, it's it's one of those things that uh, you know, I don't know. I, I people will it. always talk. I mean, yeah. I I totally got you on this. I yeah. totally dig it. But they will always talk. Thank you. Just really fuck him. I really fucking appreciate it. Um, Fuck them. But yeah, all. it's the thing is, I just I love. Maybe it's because of my background with Jazz Jackrabbit and whatnot. I just love like little 2D platformers, you know, and it's just, there's something about them that just has this, this charm to them. And, you know, I love good pixel art. Um, I follow a, no- a number of uh, really talented pixel artists on uh, Twitter 
And, you know, I'm always like, you know, anytime I post something cool, I'm like, that looks amazing. Blah, 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 right. I also follow a few Instagram butt models, but don't tell my wife. <laughs> Come on. Instagram is for butts. Let's be honest here. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, About shooters. Uh, one more thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, man. I enjoy your conversation, guys, absolutely. But uh, I wanted to uh, talk a, a, a bit more about shooters turning RPGs and uh, action adventure games, turning open world action adventure games well, similar a, a, to a, each a, other. A, a quick, a quick couple, yeah. quick, couple quick points, right? Like watching my wife play Halo Infinite. The guns are too fucking big. Uh, that's right. I fucking said it. Um, and also the idea of okay, so back up. In the restaurant industry and, you know, especially in like, you know, fast food and snacks, they have the, this idea they call mouthfeel, you know, like where, you know, you, you get a Dorito and you bite into it and it's crunchy and it tastes, you know, over seasoned actually. But, you know, that and so the idea of gun feel in video games, and that's one thing that so many developers miss sometimes is, you know, how does how does how does the, the weapon sound? How are the do, what do the tracers look like? If it's an energy weapon, does it sound punchy does it you know feel powerful does it look cool in your hands right that's one thing counter-strike in my opinion counter-strike is the most airtight shooter ever made uh you know i just i literally like they, they nailed the scale of the characters the weapons all look great people are willing to pay tons of money for different weapon skins but yeah i mean it's you know gun feel is a really really important thing but again i mean you know the rpg elements make things sticky right Yeah, they do, but um, I've replayed Bulletstorm before uh, before recording this episode, uh, the, the game that you produced uh, with uh, People Can Fly, and man, I miss this kind of shooter so much these days. I mean, uh, there's a lot of indie shooters uh, with uh, yeah, the, brutal the vibes, the, yeah. Call them the boomer shooters, right? Um, I don't <laughs> think this is, you know, this is too general. Uh, they call... The, these games boomer shooters but boomer shooters are, are not like that <laughs> i mean games like blood duke nukem 3d and uh quake one and quake two and hex and heretic they were not close to these crazy uh indie shooters with uh you know crowds of enemies just running at you like so like serious like serious sam right Yeah, yeah, they they mostly remind me of uh, Serious Sam, not uh, the the old school uh, classic shooters. But I mean, the, uh, I I I realize that there's a lot of different indie shooters out there, and uh, I don't want to be you know too general about it too. But getting back to Bulletstorm and uh, the RPG elements, it has none. And uh, I mean, there is the there, there's the points that you gather. There's the bugs that you can kill. There's the some stuff that you can buy for your guns to uh, to get upgrades and uh, ammo. But it's not the the RPG stat statistics or the inventory or something like that. And it's just a shooter with exactly one big core idea. You can violently push your enemies to obstacles and watch them die in a funny way and uh i mean there's no half ass rpg elements because there's so so many shooters when uh when you can see that um, the devs uh, probably wanted to make their game more sticky as we put it in this episode but it's not enough to just add statistics And uh, if we if we talk about what Raphael has said, this is the collaboration between shooters and, and RPGs. I mean, like in Prey or uh, Dishonored or System Shock. It's not just shooter with statistics and level ups like Destiny. Uh, so, uh, if you were about to create an FPS now, what would it be? I mean, four barrel, double barrel shotguns. <laughs> Um, there, there is Bulletstorm knew exactly what it was. Um, and I think, you know, EA's marketing, no offense to them was kind of uneven and, it, you know, it didn't wind up doing that well. Uh, but it's remembered as kind of like a cult classic at this point, you know, kind of like, you know, escape from New York or Blade Runner. Uh, right? Yeah. And yeah, you know, the dialogue was fucking hilarious. Uh, and it's gorgeous. Yeah. They, they, they really, people can fly work their butts off on it. And, uh, fun fact is right over there on my patio. Uh, the cacti in the game where you can kick people into were, was my idea. 
And uh, my wife, uh, when the game shipped, gave me a cactus that I still have to this day that's getting quite large, actually. But yeah, I mean, Adrian Hamelage, uh, he's a fucking nut in a good way. Um, and, you know, the game was just, it was fun. You know, the, the, the big thing is, uh, in my opinion, it didn't have a proper multiplayer. It had a co-op multiplayer, you know, where, the, you know, the general just yelled at you the entire fucking time, <laughs> which was obnoxious. Uh, but it needed like a proper, you know, you, 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 if you have an FPS that's mostly action based, you know, people are going to want to shoot each other with said guns, you know, and mm-hmm. kick them in slow, slow motion and shit like that. Um, so, you know, again, that's also the world in which we live where, oh, by the way, yeah, speaking of all this shit, uh, the whole games as service thing is exhausting. Mm. My God. Jesus Christ, Raph. It's like literally like you have to have like, you know, it's chapter one, season one. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, back in my day, we call that DLC, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm uh, I'm feeling lucky. I never had to go through that. Uh, I, I left uh, ZeniMax before they enforced this kind of approach. And then I, uh, you know, all the new partners and publishers we've worked with since uh, I've been very much into... Uh, do what you do what you do you know and and do it with integrity as opposed to like try to seek the market that's that's a great philosophy then right i'm like i'm currently working with uh this uh game developer uh doing some consulting work with them and you know he's looking at like does he want to be publisher funded or vc funded and i keep nudging him towards vc funding because a lot of publishers out there they don't know what they want right they they just they they, they, they do my old boss mark rain um, he told me, you know, they're smoke chasers, you know, and they're, they're mm-hmm. chasing, they're chasing after the trend. And that's one of the reasons, you know, to go back to FPS is why lawbreakers cratered was because people thought we were chasing the smoke of overwatch. Like we saw overwatch's announcement and somehow farted out a, a very similar game. I'm like, no, you know, it's kind of like, you know, when uh, deep impact and Armageddon came out, you know, it turns out two people, two groups of people had the same idea in a similar time frame because it was, yeah, it was, it was, because that's how it works. Yeah. Trends, yeah, it, it's it's that's how it works for for people. You know, we we do have uh, there's. It's like when, yeah, it's like when internet was invented, it was ready for it. So if it was not an inventor, it would have been another one. So it's the same thing. Yeah, it really is. But yeah, no, I I'll always love FPSs. Um, and just you know, look at the the core mechanic of Doom, and you know, and like the fact that it encourages you to get close to the enemies in order to get health back. It's that that just that one core mechanic is fucking brilliant. The enemy roster is fucking great. It's beautiful. Uh, the pacing is fucking fantastic. And then they added all this insane lore to the Doom franchise, which is just fucking cool as shit. So just mad respect to them. But yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, like I'll always love shooters, you know, shooters, you know, it's easy to just do it, you know, a, a line trace, you know, and hit somebody. But to balance that with, you know, proper friction, adhesion, bullet magnetism, all that stuff, especially on console is a fucking art form. So. Yeah, but you. So you were saying you're you're uh, steering your client towards uh, self funding, basically. At least not maybe self funding, but uh, self seeding, I guess. Like for the, uh, the, I at mean, least at I, the beginning of the game. Uh, VCs, uh, you know, venture capitalists, yeah. right? Because uh, you know, publishers, you know, like I'll never forget. Like I hired this guy named Dave Nash. Good dude was a lead level designer on the Gears franchise, and he, he worked on some of the Medal of Honor games at EA. And he, he, an executive came in and is like. Add more exploding barrels because kids love that shit. Like that kind of like dumb fuck right. back, right? And it's just like, dude, like, okay, you guys are the money men. You know, and one, one of the many things I learned in my life is hire creative people and no one to get the fuck out of the way, but no one to check in, right? Um, but yeah, a lot of publishers just, you know, like, oh, well, we, this game works, so therefore this is going to work. It's like no one could have predicted Minecraft. No one could have predicted Roblox. No one could have predicted Fortnite. No one could have predicted PUBG, you know, like all of that, you know, and it's, it's a thing, you know, you can't, you know, Jason Rubin from Naughty Dog and now at Oculus told me, you know, past success or failure is not an indication of future success or failure. Like you'd never know what's going to be next, right? Absolutely. And specifically the past failures, that's the weird one, because you could take a concept that failed five years ago, do it again. Uh, and then you have all the publishers saying, oh, you know, from our data, this thing will never work. And it's like, well, uh, how interesting, <laughs> you know, because now you can do it again and this time you're, it works. You're, you're, you're totally speaking my fucking language, man, because it's one of my baby. Uh, my dog had surgery recently, long story. Um, but the thing is, is, uh, like seeing, I love games that try to do something cool 
and unfortunately fail. And then I swoop in and I'm like, okay, I can do a game like that. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to do it right with a great IP. And that was what Gears was. You know, Winback came out in the, uh, uh, I think it was the N64. And then Kill Switch came out. And, you know, yeah, did okay. Kill Switch. And then Lee Perry showed me Kill Switch. And I was like, boom, next thing you know, Grand Theft Auto is covering it. Right. So, yeah. I mean, it goes back to the same. It goes back to what we were saying earlier, where, you know, the the big guys will do over and over what has been successful to them. And so like, you know, in this in this instance, we're talking about the publishers, you know, they've seen this and that working. So they're going to do like that forever. You know how like they change the entire editorial line with based on the past like this, this game works. So now like, you know, people like menus to do in the in the blue color that you know it needs to have a, a blue thing so now all our games have the blue thing yeah, yeah, yeah. we've and, seen uh, that you love dark chocolate so here's a bucket of shit yeah and then it's you know someone that's surprises that, that, you that, that, like, that's like against the grain. <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> the thing is you know like so many of these companies are publicly traded on the stock market and they you know the investors expect the same thing but that's not how you innovate that's not how you, you do different things and you know it's the same thing with you know fortnite being such a big phenomenon and I, you know, I tell my friends that I'm still friends with over at Epic. I'm like, guys, you should be incubating other stuff. Like, you know, you know, uh, Mike Caps told me back in the day, Gears of War might not always be cool. And, you know, mm. it, it feels like the franchise, no offense to the, the hardworking people, the coalition, it feels like it's kind of limping along a little bit, you know, because every fucking day on Twitter, people are tweeting me, make Gears great again. And I'm like, first off, you're parroting the biggest piece of shit American president ever. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, it's uh, I'd consult, but seriously, like people want to go with what they know. And uh, it goes back to the top of the conversation with, you know, making new IP, you know, mm -hmm. Superman came, w w was a new IP at one point. Spider-Man was a new IP at one point. Dishonored was a new IP at one point. Halo was, so was Gears. Like, you know, take a fucking chance, motherfuckers, and trust your gut. As opposed to always just the numbers. That's right. I fucking yeah. said it. I said it. To be fair, to be fair to the publishers and and the people who have money, some of it is the market. You know, uh, sometimes you want to blame the market too. It's like, well, if, if there is there is data behind the the new IP problem, uh, it is that. People complain about there's nothing new, but then the same people that complain about there's nothing new will probably buy whatever number four. You know? Hence the the Marvel Cinematic Universe, <laughs> right? Like people complain about I I I just you know I'm yeah I can't take it anymore. Like oh there's so many so many uh, spin offs and like and now with the multiverse excuse then you can you can keep going forever. The the, the um, multiverse the multiverse thing apart from Bioshock Infinite is the ultimate narrative like crutch for and again I hear, the, I, I hear the new I hear the new Spider Man's fucking amazing for the record so I'll, we'll put that over here but the whole like you know like oh well you know so and so isn't dead now it's 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 in the multiverse like the the and same thing like you know Ant Man of the Wasp the the latest I'm like completely like I'm I'm not even gonna tune into that you know. Um, but yeah, and you know Disney's doing nonstop remakes. You know, and to be yeah. fair, the the new Little Mermaid was actually really good. And oh my god, it was a Black Little Mermaid! Oh my god, <laughs> no, she she's fucking wonderful, great voice, beautiful, great actress. Um, but yeah, you know, it's it goes back to you know the name you know people people want that, but that has to start somewhere. Am I right? It has to start somewhere, and uh, I think as long as people want to make easy money, they will they will follow the market wants because the same way you know often. Often people don't even really know what they what they want. You know, they, they think they want like, you know, oh, the sequel to that movie that was so so cool. But actually, if you did bring something different, they might even like it even more. But I think the people who take the risk of making new things, they also know that they could take less risk by just making a sequel. So they just go for that, and it's and then it perpetuates that 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 lame state we're in, which is sad. But I but think that's not it, always works. It, it does not it doesn't, work. doesn't guarantee Thank you God. shit. Yeah. But I mean, look Thank at God, like, it people, like, a company, companies like Devolver and fucking A24, you know, and what they're doing. Yeah. Right? And like the old uh, Henry Ford uh, allegedly once said, you know, if I'd asked the people what they wanted, they'd say a faster horse. 
you know. Mm. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, totally, totally. But 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 those are out, outliers, you know, outliers that will break the rules, etc. But for the majority, people would just keep on doing what work until it does not work. And so, like, my hope is that you know soon it won't work, and then they go like, okay, well, let's stop with the sequels for a minute. Yeah, my my thing is just you know try small new stuff and and incubate. You know, and and see, you know, Fortnite like languished for years at Epic. And, you know, right after I left, I, yes, I did work on it. Fine, whatever. Um, you know, it wound up sh- shipping as kind of like a plants versus zombie kind of tower defense game. And then they saw the success of PUBG and the battle royale genre exploding. And they did, did the best, in my opinion, the best pivot in video game history. Yeah. And then they've maintained that, you know, as a good example. Lightning of, fast. You know, Lightning yeah. fast. Yeah, I mean that's the you know the power of you know Tim's team and you know the, the the amazing tools over there and you know next thing you know step three profit it's so it's not always mm-hmm. that simple and you know it's the thing is you know even you know when it comes to my wife um, she's you know writing a novel she's you know working on a comic book I told her I'm like you know you need to find a writing partner uh, you know I'll fund it and you it's a good idea but you need you know a little bit better narrative structure and it's going to take two plus years for this thing to get written inked colored lettered uh find a publisher bring it to market you're literally again looking at two years plus and so also there's going to be a lot of pr involved and all that and like just you know it's the same thing with like if you have a game idea you know people are always people will ask me sometimes like how long does it take to make a game i'm like uh how long does it take to make a car or house like what we talk what what model are we talking about what parts are we talking about how big is the house what's the market all right we'll get do you have hardwood floors do you have marble do you have tiles like what like 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 i hate those fucking open-ended questions and that's one of my biggest pet peeves in life is i hate it when people leave out variables right so okay that was a bit of a fucking rant i apologize (laughs) that's okay (laughs) I, you know, we've been in the same, we've been in the same parties where people say, uh, so, oh, you make video games. Great. What, what, what video games do you make? It's like, do you know about video games? No, I never play, but tell me. <laughs> Dude, one of my favorite things is uh, my wife being such a diehard gamer is, you know, like a friend of mine who lives directly across the way. She's fucking loaded and she's super cool. And she throws these like wine dinners. And we went there one time and like, you know, my lovely young wife was there and like all these you know local housewives like start cornering her like you you play video games my son plays video games it's like yeah okay fine and then she's like they're like you build pcs oh my god well what the hell and they, like literally they all like surround her and like crowd her and i'm like yeah fucking i married a fucking unicorn but yeah the, the, to, to bring it full circle the thing is is video games ultimately as you both know offer escapism from the real world that for some reason on the surface feels like it's getting exponentially shittier so um i for me personally part of you know what you know what i miss guys i miss getting new builds you know i miss you know syncing up in perforce and then seeing what's new and raf have you ever had this happen where programmers try and pull a fast one on you and they they change some sort of variables or modify something without like like trying to be all sneaky. Has that happened to you? <laughs> uh, you know, I don't think so. In fact, we've always had uh, very uh, good uh, you know team players that nev- don't really try to sneak in things. But I I could see how that would be annoying. Oh, uh, I had this one time uh, uh, on Gears where one of the programmers uh, decided to increase the speed in which you could like do the evade the roll. And I immediately like knew, like you know, like after decades, you felt it. <laughs> oh, I knew. It. I fucking knew it. So I read, I read him the riot act, um, and then uh, one of my programmers at Bosky modified the FOV from I think we our default was ninety. He put it at like uh, eighty or something like that. And one of the things that always bothered me about Halo is how how snug the FOV was, which, as you know, you sometimes do that for frame rate reasons, blah blah blah. And I walked into his office and I was like, "Who changed the FOV?" And he looked at me like, how did you know? And I'm like, dude, it's not my first fucking, it's not my first fucking rodeo. Okay. So, but you know, I do, again, I miss, I miss builds. I miss, you know, giving feedback. That was half of my job at Epic was just typing up lists of shit to like do or fix. Um, but I, in the meantime, I'm enjoying, you know, the Broadway endeavors in the comic book industry and uh, yeah, Raph, I'm fucking looking forward to your next stuff. Well, thank you. It's going to be a while. <laughs> it's gonna take a few years but um thank you 
Uh, to, to other news, by the way, Raphael here ha has been recently knighted by the French Order of Merit. Did you know Shut that, Clifford? That's fucking yeah, awesome, man. That, so you were kind of... So, it, it, so it's Sir Raph now. Yes! Yeah, it's right? not no. that man fox, it's that Sir fox. <laughs> <laughs> nice co nice uh, callback, it, nice callback. It, it doesn't give me a title, apparently. I, I, I double-checked, but <laughs> it does not give me a title. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a medal, it's a uh, recognition for... Uh, uh, you know, in France, I guess in different countries they do that too, like the Order of Merit, uh, Knight, Knights of Order of Merit. They, they have one in England as well. It's basically uh, it used to be a military kind of kind of uh, recognition, but now it's also uh, in any industry that has a significant uh, advancement or representation in the rest of the world for France. You know, so like that's that's how it works. So I'm, so, you know, so so that's your background. You're you're French. I'm French. Yes, yes. Uh, and yeah. arcane was made there. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi, ce soir? <laughs> Not ce soir. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I am. Fun fact is in high school, in high school, all the cool kids were taking uh, Spanish. And I was like, fuck that. I'm going to take French. And next thing I know, I'm in Paris kissing my wife in the Eiffel Tower. And yeah, exactly. Next thing you know, you know you're married. Well, that's, that's why, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I fucking... That was the move. Yeah, it's just uh, the, uh, just going to going to the Louvre. Um, I, so I mentioned another podcast real quick, um, talking about. Uh, have you guys watched uh, Doctor Who? Yep. So um, this is a weird flex, but okay. I'm friends with Karen Gillan, um, and then uh, I think it was Matt Walsh was the Doctor at one point, and he um, we were at Comic Con, and my wife was feeding him candy at a party. Long story there, but the thing is, is uh, there's a scene in Doctor Who where they find Vincent van Gogh and they bring him to the future and they take him to the Museum d'Orsay, which is beautiful. I've, I've been there and they take him to his exhibit and Vincent van Gogh, my understanding is had, you know, lived a tortured life. Uh, he believed he, he, uh, he struggled to sell uh, one of his paintings and then the actor looks just like him, but the actor goes for it when he finally sees and Bill Nye, not the science guy, the, the British actor, uh, Matt goes up to him and asks him, you know, his thoughts about Vincent van Gogh. And he gives this amazing, amazing monologue talking about how Vincent van Gogh is arbitrarily one of the greatest painters of all time and an amazing man, but it goes on and the actor just loses it. And I'm getting goosebumps telling you this. Um, the fact is, you know, as a creative and seriously, Raph, like I, I, I'm assuming you felt the same way. You just want to know, that, yeah, you know, we like money, but you just want to know that your work made an impact, you know, and to see the actor just go for it, you know, and to see him just lose it is just, it always brings me to tears. So it's, uh, yeah, you know, create, always create, you know, if, if, you know, I'm an atheist, but if God was the creator, the best way we could honor them is by creating. So good, good Breach. words. <laughs> On that note. Yeah, thank you very much, Clifford. Yeah. Thank, Peter, thanks me, for coming. Do, do me a favor, go to YouTube and look up No Ho Hank. Absolutely, I will do that. Uh, and I want to. He's a bald dude, pale with an Eastern European accent. I swear to God, <laughs> <laughs> spitting image. <laughs> that was easy, <laughs> too easy. Um, and uh, yeah, last but not least, uh, I wanted to thank our subscribers for collaborating on, on making this episode happen. Uh, we are not done yet uh, we are going to finish this season we are not chasing quantity uh, and uh, i hope we will never uh, chase quantity uh, so uh, thank you thank you thank you guys both for your time and uh, see you in the next episode yeah thank you so much for having me and raf good seeing you bud nice take seeing care. you too cliff bye. take care take care peter bye cliff <laughs>